Hey, I'm April, and this is Bitch Bed Podcast. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back, or welcome to the podcast. I am going to be switching some gears with this episode, and I do want to preface that this is not a political episode. I personally don't like politics. I have no interest in politics, and normally I don't really entertain any conversations about politics. But I do, however, know a thing or two about how the media is supposed to cover the politics of this country, and I've got some things to say about it. As I mentioned in my first episode, I do have a bachelor's degree in communication, uh, but more specifically, it has an emphasis in multimedia journalism. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into it. So what is journalism? Well, the definition is the activity or profession of writing for newspapers, magazines, or news websites, or preparing news to be broadcast. This is supposed to provide the public with all the information about a topic, policy, candidate, or event in an unbiased manner so the public can make an informed decision. Since I started uh, taking journalism classes while in community college, there was one consistent lesson that was taught at the beginning of every single class I attended, which was that journalists are the watchdogs of the government. And journalism is the unwritten fourth branch of government. Journalism is supposed to be a selfless act, a profession that prides itself on standing up for what's right and just, a profession that understands the importance of having an informed public and being able to relay information in a way that everyone consuming it can understand, not just a select few. A profession built on standing up to a government that they didn't believe in because they believed that the public needed to know what was happening behind closed doors. And I don't feel like this is the media that we have today. Since the current media industry is not up to the correct standards of journalism, I don't watch the news. I actively go out of my way to avoid consuming anything related to the news. In all of my journalism classes while I was in college, I was one of the only people that would say that I didn't consume anything from the media because what we have today isn't journalism. It's propaganda. Well, what's propaganda? That definition is... Information, especially of a biased or misleading nature, used to promote or publicize a particular political cause or point of view. This is what leads to divide and having groups of people being pitted against each other. This is all the media is now, no matter what side of the political spectrum it falls on. The constant message that's getting spewed from all different media organizations is You have to think like I do, and if you don't, then you are the problem. Journalism is supposed to have no place for commentary or personal opinions. If you cannot separate the two and leave your own biases and closed-mindedness at the door, then you shouldn't be allowed to broadcast anything to the public. Messages that generate any kind of divide in this country shouldn't be getting any amount of airtime. The people in power want us to be fighting each other so they can be left in the dark to continue their shady business when they are always supposed to be in the spotlight. I'm sure you have all seen in some aspect the clips where it starts as one broadcast showing a story and then it expands into dozens and dozens of different broadcasts all showing the exact same story. The media is more concerned about being the first to cover something or simply covering the exact same story as their competitors than being factual and providing the public with what they actually deserve to know. Not to mention, if a correction ever needs to be issued for a story that was ran, 
the correction will never get as much airtime as the original incorrect story. And for those of you that don't know, a correction is basically a, hey, we got this wrong, here's all the information we did uh, get wrong, but here's all the corrected information for that story. And yes, corrections are actual things that should happen in journalism, because if you feed the people wrong information, you should admit it. Today's media has a ratings first mindset over providing actual quality journalism to the public. They would rather put their own twist on a story to have more people tune in or click a link. They would rather show a 10 to 15 second clip of their choosing so they can then spew their biased opinion and unsolicited advice for the remainder of the segment. The news has become an entertainment business rather than a journalistic organization. Why do we hear about celebrity relationships as much as we do? Don't get me wrong. I have my celebrity relationships that I root for because seeing people in love should always be a good thing. It's a nice reminder, a palate cleanser, if you will. But it shouldn't be covered by the media as much as it is. A celebrity spotting will never be breaking news. Unless they need a distraction. Everything is framed to tell a narrative, and that narrative is extremely one-sided no matter which broadcast you choose to tune into, when in reality, every news broadcast or article should be as unbiased as possible and should also include both sides of the issue, topic, etc. Because let's not forget that their actual job is to report on what's happening and be relayers of important information, not to commentate on current events. The news isn't supposed to be a sports broadcast. The media are no longer watchdogs of the government. They're lapdogs, and it shows. The people in power have an, it's okay when we do it, mentality, and there is an incredible lack of accountability by our media to ensure that those in power are acting accordingly and having the people's best interests in mind, not their own personal gain which explains why they've been able to broadcast their propaganda messages for so long. What's the saying? Be aware of a wolf in sheep's clothing? Why was the Depp v. Heard case televised so heavily, but the United States v. Maxwell case barely got any coverage? And weren't those two cases happening around the same time? Not to mention, it was proven that full court proceedings could be televised, and they do, in fact, get people to tune in. So then why was it only just one? And wouldn't you say that one of those cases was vastly more important for the public to be made aware of? And yet, that book wasn't released until about, what, four years later? Because that's right. Celebrity scandals make great distractions when it's needed. All anyone wants to do is point fingers and claim that they are the problem, instead of being able to come together and solve the problems that are prevalent in this country. The media is not only letting this happen, but they are also doing it themselves. You shouldn't listen to this broadcast because of this. You shouldn't listen to this other broadcast because of that. They are so focused on trying to discredit other media organizations when they barely have any credibility themselves. How are you better than those other media channels when you're doing the same thing they're doing, just under a different banner? Oh, that's right, because it's okay when you do it. What's that other saying? People in glass houses shouldn't be throwing stones? Another thing I don't like seeing is celebrities trying to convince their fans or other celebrities in order to get those fan bases to vote or lean a certain way politically, so that way they can get what they want. To me, this is bad form. If the party or person that you support cannot get the appropriate number of votes in the correct, ethical, and moral way, then they shouldn't be in the positions that they're in. In fact, I gain more respect for celebrities that keep their own thoughts and opinions about politics out of the public light. I don't like this celebrity because they didn't weigh in on this one political thing. 
you shouldn't be turning to celebrities for your political guidance to begin with. You shouldn't be basing your own political views strictly off of who a certain celebrity is or isn't supporting. Their job is to entertain you, not to educate you. But this is the reality that the current media has left us with, since they have proven time and time again that they cannot be trusted. What celebrities should do instead of forcing their beliefs or political views on their fans just because they have a platform that people tune into is they should supply their fans with the resources, not propaganda, about that party so the fans can make an informed decision for what's best for them. Because let's not forget that celebrities have different wants and needs than the average person about what they look for in a political candidate, policy, or topic. Just because celebrities support a specific party, candidate, or policy does not mean that they should be followed blindly. Their motives and reasons behind who they support are different than yours. Media companies have become more concerned with having their pockets stuffed with dirty money than keeping the public informed on the back end and deals of our government which leads to a deep mistrust in the media as well as the government. Anytime some crazy thing gets released from the government that the media is covering, my first and only thoughts are, what are they trying to bury? Why are they trying to have us look over here? And what do they not want us to know? Where are the journalists that uncovered Watergate or the pedophilia relocation that was happening within the Catholic Church. It seems like investigative journalism isn't a thing anymore, which is not something that we should be letting fall to the wayside. All journalism should have some investigative element to whatever it is being covered. It seems like no one is asking the right questions anymore. They just worry about asking the questions that will supply them with a soundbite to generate a smear campaign for the next two hours of airtime and call it breaking news. Have they forgotten that the press is protected by the First Amendment? Because I do not understand what has the media so scared to speak up about what the government at large is doing, not just the president. There are three branches of our government, yet only one is mentioned most by the media. Or maybe they aren't scared at all. And instead, they decided to enter into some kind of agreement with the government where they will supply the public with echo chambers so that we can only think one way as to keep the focus off the government. Podcasters have become more reliable resources than the media. Hell, even Russell Brand left Hollywood so he can spread awareness to what is actually happening in a country that he isn't even originally from as well as other events happening around the world. And do you want to know what they're doing differently than the mainstream media? They're actually providing different perspectives on the same issue, policy, party, candidate, etc., which then promotes and encourages open dialogue between people. It's okay to think differently. It's okay to have people in your life that you don't agree on everything with. It's okay to enter into conversations where your views and beliefs are being challenged. It doesn't make you wrong and them right or vice versa. It means that you're opening yourself up to a different perspective and wanting to see where they're coming from or why they believe in the things that they do. And it's also completely okay to leave that conversation without changing your mind on anything. Just like it's equally okay to have your mind be changed because perspective is supposed to shift and change. People in power want us stupid and closed-minded so they can keep getting away with everything. Which is why I made the decision not to listen or consume any of the propaganda that they make sure floods the media. Because I know the difference between actual news coverage and propaganda. Maybe now, so do you. Or you can start to look at the media in a new light. I hope that you can look at the media with a bit more criticism and to take everything that they push out at you at face value because it's prevalent now more than ever that the media does not have the public's best interests in mind like they're supposed to. 
Why is no one talking about any of the policies being brought up or passed regarding the food that we eat? Because I can't be the only one that has heard from people that have visited different countries or moved abroad that they eat the same brands that are offered here, yet they don't feel bloated or gassy or like they need to take Pepto-Bismol afterwards. Does anyone else find it interesting that crime is the most reported on subject across all media platforms, and even that is strategically written to carry out the narrative they want to push? Or that the government has failed not only this most recent audit, but also the last five audits before it? But if we file our taxes incorrectly the first time, we have to worry about potentially facing jail time. Funny how some things only apply to us. There was something that stuck with me since I was forced to take political science while I was in college. I can't tell you who brought it to my attention because I had to take this class three times and they definitely all started to blend together toward the end, but it was about the cycle of government. I also can't tell you about the different stages in the cycle that I was shown, but I do remember that it ended in revolution and started with new government. At the time of this class, my professor, whichever one it was, had commented that where our current government stood, they would put us past the halfway mark on this cycle. They also predicted that if the government at the time continued how they were going, we would end up at the revolution stage of the cycle. Do I think this is where we're going as a country? Maybe. I have no idea. Because that question is nowhere near my realm of expertise. But what I do know is that the current media is not helping in the manner the way the public needs them to be. Have the people running these media organizations really allowed themselves to be bought so that only certain messages will be presented to the public? Did they really hand over their First Amendment right of freedom of the press that easily? And if they did, how many more are they going to convince us to hand over before we realize that it's too late? Because remember, it only takes one domino to fall first. As always, to all the negative voices in your head, bitch bet. Thanks so much for listening. Until we talk again next time.